Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not affiliated with the College Board. Today I want to discuss the chi-square test of independence. Note that I, it looks like chi-square, but it's pronounced chi-square. It's from a Greek letter chi, so that looks like an X. And well, this is chi-square is another way of writing it. There are two <coughs> chi-square tests today. Today I'm going to discuss the test of independence. So suppose we're thinking of opening up a vegetarian restaurant in the Washington, D.C. area, and we might decide we could locate that restaurant in Montgomery County, in Fairfax, or in D.C. And let's for now, and, and so we want to know, does it matter where we locate it? Are there different proportions of vegetarians in these areas? If, there's, if they are different, then it matters where we locate our restaurant. So I'm just going to focus on, let's say, Montgomery County versus D.C. Let's ignore Fairfax for right now, just to keep it simpler. And so <coughs> let's say we took a survey in, in Montgomery County in D.C., and we asked how many people were vegetarians and how many were not. So let's say we asked, we got 80 people in Montgomery County and uh, 18 of them were vegetarians and we did uh, 90 people in D.C. and uh, 19 of them were vegetarians. And we want to know, is there a significant difference between the proportion of vegetarians in D.C. and the proportion in Montgomery County? Now, one way we learned to do this last chapter was a two-prop z-test, two-proportion z-test, and I'll, I'll do that uh, in a few minutes. But another way is called the chi-squared independence test. Now remember when we had a um, uh, the box? If we were to do this as a box, we would have it, we'd have 18, 19, so this is event, uh, if event A is in D.C. and event A complement is Montgomery County, event B <coughs> is vegetarian, event B complement is not vegetarian, then we have, well, let's do this as a box. Hang on. Okay, so we have this box. <coughs> um, so we have event A, event B, A, C, B, C. We're just doing this in terms of numbers, not in terms of percents. Um, 71, 90, 80, 90, 62. And when we were Thinking what, about independence, what we were, what we want, the question was: Does the probability of A and B equal probability of A times probability of B? And if they're equal, then they're independent. And what the chi-square independence test uh, tries to do <coughs> is say whether these are approximately equal, because they could be close to equal, and if they're close enough to equal, we'll, we'll say they're independent, but if they're far enough away, then they're not independent. And so what we'll do is we'll calculate, um, essentially, the difference between these two things. This thing, the probability of A times probability of B, we'll call the expected, the expected <coughs> counts in this cell, and 
the actual A and B we'll call the observed and we'll look at the difference between the expected and observed O minus E we'll square it in order to get a measure of distance and we'll divide it by E in order to scale it and that's our chi-square variable. Now remember when we were doing the box <coughs> that once we knew one of these things like A and B uh, and we had B and we had A we could solve for all the rest. So really only one of these things we need to do independence. But the chi-square calculation actually calculates this O minus E squared over E for all four cells. Um, the fact that <coughs> once you have one cell means you have the other three shows up in something called the degrees of freedom for the chi-squared test. The degrees of freedom is equal to the number of rows times the number of columns minus one. In this case, t it would be, um, let me scroll down, give myself a little more chalkboard. So there are two rows times two columns minus, uh, sorry, um, um, hang on. Sorry, I misspoke there. Uh, it's not uh, R minus C minus one. It's the degrees of freedom is equal to R minus one, the number of rows minus one, times the number of columns minus one. In this case, that would be two minus one times two minus one equals one. So there's really only one degree of freedom, even though there are four cells. And that's, that's what I wanted to get at here. Okay, so we're not going to sit and calculate all these O minus E squareds over E and so on. We're, we're going to take a shortcut. Um, well, maybe I'll show you one of them. Uh, the, uh, the, the expected count in the upper right, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to do it here. Expected is equal to... <coughs> The row prob the row total, w which is thirty seven times the column total ninety. I'm 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 focusing in here to get this. Um, so I'm taking the row total times the column total <coughs> over. Uh, I think the total number squared, something like that. Um, yeah, I think that'll be right. And that'll give me the expected count. Um, hang on. No, I don't want to square that. I just want to leave it here. Okay, that'll give me an expected count. And then I would take this 19, I would subtract whatever I got here, square it, and then divide <coughs> by the expected count. And that'll give me a chi-square. I do that here, and then I do that here, and then I do that here, and I do that here, and that gives me four of them. And I add them up, and I get a chi-square. Again, we're just going to do that in the calculator. So let me scroll up, remember my numbers. So these will be the numbers, the 18, 19, 62, and 71. Okay, so I've entered these into a matrix, a 2 by 2 matrix, 18, 19, 62, and 71. Okay, now I'm going to do stat, test, and I'm going to look for a chi-square test. There it is. Chi-square test. I'm going to go up one. Come on. Whoop. There we go. Chi-square test. Okay, the observed is A. That's the matrix I put in. The expected, it's going to calculate itself. So all I have to do is go down and calculate. Okay. 
Okay, and I get a chi-square of 0 0.05 and a p-value of 0.83. Okay, so we got a chi-square of 0 0.05 and a p-value of <coughs> 0.83, which is a very high p-value. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Well, what is the null hypothesis? In a chi-square independence test, the null hypothesis is that the two variables are independent. In this case, the two variables are location and proportion of vegetarians independent. So what this says is it <coughs> doesn't seem to matter where I locate my vegetarian restaurant. Now just to check this, I'm going to do a two prep Z test. So hang on while I set that up. Okay, I've got my two prob Z test. I've got 18 over 80 versus 19 over 90. I'm going to do calculate and see what I get. Okay, we get a Z of 0.219. Wait a minute, let me go back. I need to change this to a not equals. There we go. Now calculate. Oops, got to go down. Okay, now we get a Z of 0.219 and a p-value of 0.83. So we have z equals 0.219, p-value equals 0.83. So we do get the same p-value. I think we should get some similarity in the z, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, so we get the same p-value regardless of whether we're using this as a um, as a chi-square test or a um, or a two-prop z test. So, what's the advantage of the chi-square test? Well, we can now do more than just two by two. So, if we go back to my Montgomery County, D.C., and Fairfax we could do an example that has all three. So let's uh, let's say we had that. Um, what was Montgomery County was the 18 over 80. So we had 18, 62 out of 80. We had 19, 71 out of 90. And suppose <coughs> Fairfax was 14, 86 out of 100. Now we can enter all three of those into a matrix and see if it if it completely doesn't matter where we locate. So let's try that. Okay, so now you can see we've got the numbers in the matrix. And now we have to do stat tests. Here we go, chi-squared test. And we just go down and calculate. <coughs> okay, this time we get a chi-square of 2.53 and a p of 0.28. So chi-square equals 2.53, p-value equals 0.28. We still fail to reject H naught, and so we don't have any strong point of view that we should locate our restaurant in one place or another, even though it looks like Fairfax has a lower proportion of 
uh, vegetarians overall <coughs> the difference is not statistically significant so we can't rule out the possibility that it's due to chance and I think that'll finish it up for the chi-square independence test there is a related video on how to do this in the calculator if the calculator stuff went too quickly for you see you next time